Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider. This is number uh, 30. So super excited because we have been doing this for now a long time, as we can say. Happy Thursday to you all. Uh, please remember that this call is being recorded as usual and it's going to be available for you to check out in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Please remember to ask your questions while this call is happening so we can have a good Q&A session at the end. Now I'll pass the word to um, Luca for the engineering department updates. Hi everybody, Luca speaking. Welcome to today's Week Insider. Uh, this week we are spending a lot of time on code review. So looking at the code that was written for the different components of our mission critical project, Sidechain Beta. In particular, there are three main areas that we need uh, uh, where we need to, to do code review. One is the sidechain SDK for all the changes we apply to it. So the epoch length, uh, the epoch logic itself, for example, is one of those, which was already um, developed in, in the past and also reviewed already. The final consensus method, the certificate creation, and more other components of the sidechain SDK. Another area of code review is now represented by the changes to the main chain required for backward transfer. And this in particular is where our efforts are being focused now. So uh, we are doing that. And as a result of the first iteration there, uh, of the first code review on that part, we had uh, some changes requested that are being applied in this uh, very specific moment. And finally, uh, there is the circuit. The news on, on, uh, on that today is that uh, first draft version of the circuit is ready. So this is uh, pretty a big deal because we have been working on this for four months and now we have a first version of the circuit ready. In particular, we are reviewing and writing tests for it, the circuit, and also moving forward on the implementation of uh, the Poseidon hash gadget. Moreover, we are in continuing the integration of the sidechain commands on Sphere by Horizon. So that activity is going on as well. Uh, to make it simple to understand, a user will be able to, uh, for example, to create a sidechain directly from Sphere by Horizon and also sending uh, uh, coins uh, from, from the main chain to a particular sidechain always on Sphere, very intuitively. And Paul in particular is working on that right now. Uh, there will be uh, a version of Sphere, Sphere by Horizon, a build, let's say, uh, that will be passed to uh, our colleague from uh, UX team uh, for tests. And, uh, uh, okay, Alberto Garofoli is doing a code review in this specific moment, so we won't have him on the call today. But if you have any question uh, at the end of the call, we'll be happy to answer them. And um, that's it for now. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Now let's continue with Chronic for the infra updates. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, so the uh, biggest news right now uh, is uh, the issue that Let's Encrypt has with revocation of a part of their certificates. So um, two days ago, um, Let's Encrypt um, essentially notified us or we were made aware that uh, 3 million certificates would be uh, revoked in essentially uh, four hours' time. So we had very little heads up. And our immediate response was um, to find out how can we check that um, our nodes or nodes of node operators aren't affected. And we provided a script um, that which, uh, with which each node uh, operator could check this. Now, uh, subsequently, or luckily, um, it turned out that um, even if certs are revoked, um, the tracking servers wouldn't, uh, wouldn't know about it. So... There's no chance for any exceptions being created. Uh, this is due to how Node.js um, actually handles the chain of trust. Um, so the tracking servers, same as the Node Tracker, are based on uh, Node.js, and Node.js has um, the trusted store of uh, Mozilla Firefox integrated. So it's not even using the um, trusted store of the operating system. 
And the way that Let's Encrypt uh, revokes certificates is through so-called uh, certificate revocation lists. Uh, those are essentially lists where a certificate is marked as invalid and uh, signed by the root certificate that this certificate is marked as invalid. But Node.js by default doesn't look into those lists. Um, so um, essentially only browsers would be affected by any revoked certificates. So this means for node operators, uh, you don't have to really check if you're um, affected by the revocation. You're not going to get a uh, exception if you are. But still, if you uh, would like to make sure that your certificates are still valid, uh, please use the provided script and follow the uh, instructions on the wiki. Um, back to Angie. Thank you, Kranik. Um, welcome to the new members. I see some uh, new uh, people here to, to the community, so welcome to them. Let's continue with uh, Ruben for the help desk updates. Hi, guys. How are you? Welcome to the new guys that are in the call. So I will be reporting to you today the help desk status from the past seven days. So as you can see, the previous week we had a total of 84 tickets sold. And from the pie chart, we can observe that the majority of the tickets generated were faucet related. Nothing unusual since uh, the faucet was gamified and improved. Uh, it has been a trend. It has always been uh, the top tickets. On the second place is taken by sphere tickets that uh, were mainly people asking for directions on how to use the wallet. In the customer satisfaction side, we got a 4.2 out of 5, and we were reviewed by a total of 13, 13 of our customers. I also want to remember the community that if someone has doubts or issues on any of our products, please raise a ticket on support.horizon.global, and we'll provide you gladly our support. That's it from the help desk side, and I pass the mic back to Angie. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ruben. Now let's have Gustavo for the UX updates. Hey, everyone. So this week we started to work on the transition of the faucet to a community hub. And uh, soon we'll start to unveil all the new features that we've been planning. And in the meantime, still for the faucet, we've been working on a promotion for the Brave browser. So keep tuned for that. And uh, we also been working on development on HD to coincide with the sidechain beta. And we've been supporting Martin with the web development tasks. And it's all for now. Best to you, Angie. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's continue with row one for the BD updates. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. So from my side, first up, kind of speaking operationally, I'm uh, just about to start running our payroll here. Um, quite a lot of payments to do today. It's going to take up a chunk of my time for the next couple hours. Uh, so payroll first, then we've got some quite large bills to pay on the engineering side. And then we have a bunch of expenses to clear and uh, something the community might be interested in. The most recent round of marketing competition winners will be getting paid out today. So the marketing team will be in touch once that's been done. Uh, and then just to tidy up from the accounting side, I know Michelle is currently waiting for the last few February bills. Once they're in, we'll be tidying the month end figures up for the leadership meeting a little bit later today. So that's pretty much everything operationally, unless, Michelle, you wanted to jump in with anything else from your side? Nope, I think you covered it all. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then for the rest of this afternoon, I am going to be up to my eyes in registration paperwork for a pretty large and prestigious kind of information gathering and uh, point of truth type service for the cryptocurrency industry that we've just signed up with. So it's going to take us uh, a few days at least to go through this in a lot of detail. But if you tune back in for the call next week, we'll be able to talk in a lot more detail about who they are and what that means. Uh, we also have a second, I really don't like announcement of announcement. I, I apologize in advance. It's kind of what I'm doing here, but we have two nice announcements to make next week. So I'm just going to go ahead and make an announcement of an announcement. Uh, so yeah, tune in for next time round, and we'll talk in more detail about an information partner, as well as a pretty cool new integration that I'm excited about personally. Uh, and that's it from me, from Ops, and from BD. I know that Angie, you wanted to jump in with an update from your side. 
So please feel free to do so. Thank you, Rowan. Uh, so just two quick updates. Uh, our ne Next Tuesday, uh, March 10, we have our meetup here in Tec de Monterrey with the community. So we will be there uh, having a good time with the community, talking about, I especially would like to talk about Fawcett and the new white paper. So all of our uh, great news. Uh, and what else? And yeah, I got I got an invitation from students for delivery for a conference happening in August in, in Guatemala. Uh, for the Latin American community. So I'll be checking the possibilities to attend there. And it, I will be super, super happy to uh, be able to meet some of our fellows from uh, Guatemala and other countries there. I'll pass the word to Vano in case you would like to give also some updates, Vano. Hello, everyone. I will add to the <laughs> announcement tune. So as you know, Russian language is a very widespread one in the Eastern Europe. And a lot of people even know it better compared to English. And currently I am uh, in talks uh, with a large Russian language media platform so that we improve our presence and get new community members there. Hopefully everything will be okay and we will have good news and announcement ready for the next weekly insider. And back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, um, Rob did an AMA, and you want to for our third party water partners, uh, Guadas community. So, it was a really good AMA uh, session uh, last week, very engaging. So, their community members asked a lot of great questions. Uh, all, the qu uh, all the questions and Rob's answers have been organized into a blog post and published online. So, if you missed this AMA session, I mean, uh, you can always read uh, the blog. Uh, so the link to the blog can be found on our Twitter feed. And we also held a uh, fan art competition last month. Uh, the entry ended last week. Uh, we are in a prog uh, progress uh, of uh, voting for a winner. So the voting is open to our community. One winner will have their design sold on our store. Uh, we have lots of votes coming in already. So uh, please head to our blog uh, and place your vote if you haven't done so. And then uh, uh, our sidechain video quiz is still ongoing. So congrats to the last round's winner, Anton from Philippines. Uh, the current quiz is to watch Rob's video uh, about sidechain use cases. And the question is that if you can build anything, what would you build on Horizon sidechain? So really interesting one. And if you have any interesting or even wild ideas, uh, watch the video and leave a comment. And you can also get a chance to win an, an, uh, an uh, exclusive uh, sidechain t-shirts. Uh, and then also we updated our note hosting page, as uh, uh, most of you already know, uh, that we are getting a lot of uh, uh, great feedback. Uh, everyone finds it very helpful for them to uh, quickly set up a note. Uh, meanwhile, we also received really good suggestions from community uh, for improvement. So we are working on uh, implementing some additional features. Uh, and then other than that, uh, we are just working on the background on a huge amount of tasks uh, in preparation for our next big release. That's it for me. Thank you. Pass it to you, uh, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Lucy, for that update. Uh, so we announced the winners of the February competition. We've only heard back from one of the three winners. So if you're one, if you're the two of the three, please check our social media to see if you've won. Uh, it would be a shame if you didn't get your prize. Uh, so in addition to that, we also have a new meetup in Ghana scheduled for March. That'll be March 23rd. So really looking forward to that. And uh, we've also launched WhatsApp last week and it's gr it's growing slowly but surely. So if you prefer to communicate via WhatsApp rather than Discord or email, please find us on WhatsApp. Uh, you can get the phone number if you go to getzen.cash. It's uh, listed about halfway down the page. So we'll be sending out uh, project updates and highlights via WhatsApp as well. Um, and that's it for me today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Let's continue uh, with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. I apologize if there's an echo here. I've uh, just returned from Milan, and it was a great time spending with the engineering team. I was very impressed to see how far the team has, has gone and the growth of the team and the depth of effort that we're doing in in our engineering shop. 
So as we continue growing the team, we, we've uh, initiated hiring efforts, and strategically, it's going to it's important for our for us to have a dedicated team to support our wallets and other products. So we're looking for two front end engineers to be co-located with our engineering team in Milan, and we've also initiate, initiated um, efforts to looking for. Uh, somebody to support a, the growth initiative. So the uh, initiatives that Jonathan has been uh, planning in the background along with Gustavo uh, to have some of that. And then from an engineering standpoint, I don't believe I heard Luca mention this, but there were no major findings in our code audit that was uh, conducted by a third party um, company. And that's great news and a testament to the excellent team and procedures in place to have great code go into production. So I just wanted to congratulate Alberto and, and the team for uh, for these efforts. And that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Ralph, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah, thanks, Angie. I'm uh, preparing a presentation for uh, something that I'm planning on doing at the end of April. And I needed some uh, raw material and some updates and to review different things and went to Horizon Academy, uh, which of course is at academy.horizon.global. And I am just overwhelmed by the amount and quality of information there on cryptocurrencies, on blockchain, on confidential uh, transactions, and on Horizon itself. I, I wasn't able to take full advantage of the site because not only is it in English, uh, it's also in French and in Spanish. Uh, so, you know, Jonas, the, the quality of the information there is awesome. And if anybody's not using that and referring to it, uh, I encourage you to do that. And, and as a basic, just read through it and make sure that you uh, understand all the concepts there and, and review it. I have to do that periodically. Just, uh, I, you know, for example, I forget exactly how a Merkle tree works and other things like that. But all the explanation is there and it's really good. So thanks. Thank you, Rolf. Now let's have Rob for the final part and then the Q&A for the team. Hey, everyone. Uh, so again, a big congrats to the engineering team for uh, an awesome code audit, at least the results that came through there. And like Rosario said, we will be publishing the results, but so no major findings. We have some things that are going to inform uh, the next uh, round of basically uh, uh, code mods that go into the next um, software release. So once everything is done, squared away, and, and we go live, we're going to be publishing the results of that. Um, but again, just to, to reiterate, this is just the way we're doing business going forward. Um, so we, we're making a major commitment here to the highest quality code possible, uh, basically the highest quality in everything we do. So really happy with the results on that. Uh, also, so came back from Milan uh, yesterday. And uh, so unfortunately, um, due to just circumstances there and not being in Europe, uh, I'm going to be uh, personally just missing the Blockchain UA conference in Kiev. Um, good news, though, is, is Alberto is going to be there and he's going to be speaking with uh, uh, Roman, our partner uh, leading the IOHK team, Veritas, about Zendu. So if anyone is in the region uh, around uh, you know, Kiev, highly recommend stopping by and listening to the, the presentation. Okay, so uh, speaking of the Milan office, so uh, as we are continuing to hire new engineers and um, you know, people to support both product and growth, um, our team has been growing significantly and we're actually in process of looking for new office space. Um, so uh, more, more to come on that on what we ultimately decide on, but the, the Milan uh, HQ for us has really been expanding just, I mean, amazingly. So the team there, um, just from the 10 days that I spent in the office with the guys has it, it's completely blown me away. It's such a high caliber group of people. And like I, I keep saying, I, I think one of the most elite groups in the entire industry. So we're, we're looking to continue expanding there, adding some new roles and it's turning into, uh, you know, quite, quite, um, you know, multifunctional team. Now, the, just a quick note on just the philosophy of managing a crypto team, you know, as we've gained some experience in this over the last few years, like I say, distributed teams are awesome. They're, they're great for many reasons. Now we can see they're also resilient. If something happens in, you know, the area, like you're located like in Milan these days, uh, it's nice to have people around the world. But what I can say is, um, from what we have built, grouping functions together adds a ton of value. So I love the fact that we have guys sitting together in an office, there's camaraderie, um, there's 
you know, there's people working together day to day. There's just increased communication from it. So I'm just really happy with the way things have evolved so far. And you can see from my perspective, my updates are usually organizational. So there's a few updates just with respect to our org. Um, now that we've, we've basically gone through our 2020 strategy, we've pumped out a roadmap for you guys. Now we're working on uh, deriving more specific KPIs uh, for internal use, really, just so that we can have measures of performance. So KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. Uh, we want measures of performance to hold ourselves accountable to ourselves and also to you, the community. So we need to know that we're doing a great job more so than just the, the congratulations that we give ourselves. You know, there are deliverables for sure that we're showing you guys, but uh, I, I want us to you know have a more rigorous way of evaluating our own performance. This also flows toward, you know, to the organization. I want to set up a more proper human resources group um, so that we, we know how we're onboarding people, how we're, you know, letting people go, how we're training people, what kind of professional development paths we're giving our work, you know, our people over time. But we have to really think about the foundation as, you know, an organization that has to grow, evolve over time. And we need a healthy organization and healthy organization starts by making sure that you take care of your people and you, you're constantly putting the, the right people in the roles for them. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what's going on there. And I can say on the budget side, so, you know, the price of Zen has been very volatile, uh, over the last few weeks here. Um, but we're still doing pretty, pretty good, uh, or we're doing well. Um, now I've said this before, but we've been working basically on a crisis budget, uh, for a while now. And you know, over the coming weeks, what I want to do is, is, uh, have the next set of, say projects for the divisions approved so that we can start plussing up some of the division resources um, so that we can finally grow beyond the the crisis mode that we've been in. So this is really good news for the project as a whole, uh, you know, since we can start taking out some other projects on the margin. Now, what I can say is I want to do this in a very conservative fashion because of the the recent volatility in, in cryptocurrencies. So we know that our budget is still volatile. And what I don't want to do is, you know, approve a whole bunch of projects and scope out resources for them and then have, you know, another, you know, crisis and resources. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to triage based on low hanging fruit projects that don't cost necessarily a lot of money. Um, but I think still add, um, you know, value uh, far in excess of, of the resource investment. Um, let's see. So going beyond the organizational stuff, uh, there are two areas that I'm very interested in. Uh, and I'll wrap up on this. So the first one is I, I really want us to launch a coordinated global meetup program. So we're working internally on this. Basically, I, I, we've been doing a really good job of growing our community digitally. Now we need to get out there in, into the real world and get people meeting each other, um, You know, get, organ, get groups going basically in every country around the world, particularly for those that we already have a presence. And the way we're doing this uh, is we need to figure out what the best recipe is for these types of meetups. So for instance, uh, you know, how do you structure the meetups? Do they need structure? What kind of incentives do you provide for people that come? Um, logistically, how do we get uh, materials, uh, you know, like informational materials, T-shirts, uh, other types of swag out uh, to many countries around the world? Um, so we're, we're working on this right now. And, you know, in the very near future, we'll be uh, just diving out there and, and getting a whole bunch more meetups going. The other thing, and this is what I'll wrap up on, is I've been mentioning this before, but on the... You know, we have this, the sidechain technology, you know, the beta uh, going to market next or this month. Um, and and from there, we're working on integrating Zendu. And then ultimately, uh, there's a process to getting all this stuff going on mainnet. So we're, we're getting there and we're making significant progress on the technology side. But now we need to start thinking uh, what's going to be the first major um, you know, sidechain that we, we want to bring to market. And we have a couple of ideas here. So, so one is, and this is one that I'm, I'm extremely excited about, is uh, launching a community competition uh, for which we provide resources for the community developers to figure out what what types of blockchain applications or sidechain applications they want to bring to market. And this could be cool. And this is part of the fun side of it. Now, the other side is more, uh, say, on either the infrastructure or the commercial side. Like, wh What would be the highest impact sidechain? Um, for providing either new infrastructure like price stable assets into the ecosystem or driving significant business usage into the into horizon. 
so that we can start getting more capital flows coming in um, to actually strengthen the network as a whole. So this is this is what we're we're doing, what we're thinking about. Uh, we have um, an in, in-house uh, analysis or research that's um, I'm, you know I'm checking out tomorrow uh, on price stable assets and how we can you know, basically map what's already what exists in the cryptocurrency world, particularly on Ethereum, but to Horizon sidechain and see if this is uh, feasible with our current tech stack that we're developing. So a lot going on, guys. Just wanted to you know, present these highlights, and there will be more information in the near future. So I'll stop here, and we can open it up to questions from Menti. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Rob. So the first question is, why the recent drop in FCAS? Mm -hmm. So this is a good one. Uh, actually, we're, we've been looking to ourselves, and in particular, what doesn't make sense is we've seen a drop in our developer score. Uh, or development score, which doesn't make any sense at all since we've been significantly increasing our development. So uh, I talked to um, Dave Balter, the CEO of Flipside, last week. And uh, one thing that I, I think we noticed is we have some significant engineering efforts going on in different repositories that probably aren't, or for sure, are not, are not being factored into the score. So you'll, you'll very likely see a, a big realignment in the near future as we start exposing some of these other repositories. So for instance, we have some cryptographic libraries that the team has been developing that, um, you know, for and that particular one has been developed on the Horizon Labs uh, GitHub. So we need to either transfer over or at least expose um, you know, those repositories to Flipside. So that's, that's uh, my perspective on it. Uh, Rowan, I know you've been uh, working a lot with these guys. Is there anything that I'm missing? Please feel free to chime in. No, I mean, I think one thing to highlight here is that it's a live representation. So it fluctuates every single day. And obviously the engineering team have been extremely busy ramping up uh, and releasing a huge amount of, of new code for the sidechain beta over the past couple of months, actually longer than that, to be fair. So we've seen that kind of developer activity rise and rise and rise and rise. And now the team are focusing on code review. So there's still a huge amount of activity going on. And like Rob said, there's still other repositories that are being worked on actively. But that ramp up of activity has started to teeter off as they're reviewing the code base ready for launch. So I think we saw a little bit of a drop and we're talking, I think, around two or three uh, percent as a little bit of a slowdown when they started reviewing code. And obviously there's activity elsewhere. So I think that's probably the best way to describe it. And it's actually a good thing that we're not seeing this ramp up during the code review testing cycle. So I would say it's it's a good signal of the code base. Cool. What's next, Lucy? Yeah, so the next question is, any progress on a solution to the sampling wood chipper issue? If so... When can we expect an upgrade away from Sprout? And I'll post mm. the question here on the chat as well. Uh, so uh, uh, Alberto is not on the call right now. Maurizio, are you here? Yeah, Maurizio, do you want to field this one? Uh, can you just repeat the question? That was, uh... Yes. So the question is, any progress on a solution to the second which chipper issue? If so, when can we expect an upgrade away from Sprout? Rob, can you help me with a question, please? I have bad connection here. Sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, the the answer is no. There isn't um, progress on that because that's just not where we're focusing right now. Um, so, I, you know, I, I wish I had. So, you know, more, more specific updates. But Mauricio, just if you want to add more context to it, the question is about the, the wood chipper issue with uh, with uh, sapling and the reason why we didn't move forward with sapling. So we integrated okay. into the code base, but we, we never actually pushed it to mainnet. Well, yeah, I mean, there were two points. One is the, I mean, the kind of change of strategy that, uh, you know, is in the white paper. So in, in the reality, I mean, the... the the way the main chain is uh, is considered is a, a safe place where all the side chains will you know will rely upon. So it needs to be as as solid as possible as possible with as as few you know uh, 
functionalities as possible, just the one that you know that allows the the transfer of, of tokens, and then we will have specific side chains doing everything else, including you know the, getting the, the privacy aspects that we want to mm-hmm. supply. And the other one is a, is a, a security issue. I mean, it's uh, with all the activities going on with the the changes on the D for supporting side chains, and that is the key of the of the code reviews activities that Delta is performing today. Is also the one that is more risky in a way because we are touching a very big and complex code base. And uh, I mean, it's uh, with all that going on. I mean, there is no really, you know, we don't really have the bandwidth to also do the, the the reviews and checks that are needed to really be fully safe on those kind of changes. If, you know, if, if in the end, if we decided to go that way. Cool, thanks, Mauricio. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob and Mauricio. If you issue with the headsets, some noise. Thank you. So the last question is, can a meetup kit be made available on the Horizon store? I can answer to this one. Uh, so this is a really uh, an interesting idea. So we provide assets um, for any marketing materials needed for the meetup, uh, and hosters will uh, use assets to produce any um, uh, prints or materials uh, locally because normally it's more economical uh, and uh, uh, faster when it's locally sourced. Uh, however, I, I do think it can um, certainly be an option. I don't know why yeah, not, you know, uh, be an option to make it uh, a to make a kit available for purchase on our store because it wouldn't make the asset support uh, for meetups more accessible. So uh, really, um, but anyways, always love to hear different ideas. Uh, like uh, Rob just mentioned that we really are pushing for meet, uh, our meetup network and uh, uh, we are gathering different ideas on how we can make it uh, more scalable, uh, you know, in terms of things, uh, how, how we can incentivize people, uh, how we can uh, uh, make it more sustain, uh, sustainable um, uh, to hosting meetups. So really like the idea and keep them coming. I think that's it. That's the uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. These are the top three questions for today's weekly insider. Uh, so we will the rest of the questions and answers to the weekly insider uh, chat channel here on Discord. Uh, and thank you, thank you again. That's uh, back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. See you in the next one. Have a great day. <laughs>